started singing yes. the Rudolph. Right he was here. talking about she was talking about. Then I picked up on what? Nigga, what? Nigga, what? <laughs> Come on! Yes. The dog. Let the dog. No, let the rain did. Because when it rains, niggas get umbrellas. <laughs> Stay dry. <laughs> and bullets come from um a Beretta. My battle rap mm-hmm. fans who know I get that. Mm-hmm. On my, my business. Hey guys, how y'all doing? <laughs> One nigga come get two nigga. Two oh. niggas go get three. Three niggas go get four niggas, and four niggas come get me. <laughs> ah. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> funniest moment in battle rap, and maybe one of the top ten funniest moments in internet like meme history <laughs> is when, it, when that nigga old solo home slapped his head. <laughs> it was like hey, that nigga the sweetest pat on the back, like. You know, in battle rap, niggas be like pushing the fuck out, niggas grabbing niggas by they fucking collar and shit. <laughs> niggas be basically manhandling niggas because they had a hot bar. This nigga came up and was like, and he ran up like real fast. So you thought he was about to like throw this nigga off the stage. He was so hyped. That nigga was like, cat. <laughs> Yo, it was it was the it was the most uh. <laughs> the most LeVar shit I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> no offense to nobody. <laughs> but, but people who read between the lines you know, and who pick up on partners' coded language. <laughs> yeah. It was so bad. It was, it was a dude with LeVar. <laughs> like, <man. laughs> yo, I, I wouldn't be surprised that nigga name was LeVar. Like, it was one of the moments where it was like, you know what? You probably ain't, but you doing some real is shit. You know? It was a real LeVar moment. That's all I'm going to say. I don't want no problem with the alphabet committee, but it was some real LeVar ass shit. Well, uh, you, can't, you shouldn't even say it nothing about the committee, because Ah. Most motherfuckers ain't in tune with that, that with that film genre. That nigga, that nigga popped that nigga with like just the tip of his middle middle finger, like, huh? Let me sprinkle that on you there, sir. <laughs> Take that with you. Good bar. It was just the combination of being such a whack ass bar and then the the zeal and the <laughs> the exuberance that which was, is nothing and, worse and the, <laughs> the softness of the impact like <laughs> it's like, nothing like, worse than rappers saying a whack bar and then expecting the crowd to actually fuck with it like in their head they in the head they had practice yeah. gonna fuck with it and they just look goofy the whole time there's nothing worse than that at all like y'all don't get that bro hey, fuck y'all then Nah, nigga, fuck that without, ball. without that part, oh solo, like that bar wouldn't have like did nothing anyway, but it would have just been like kind of like <laughs> this nigga still lame, but uh, he ain't hitting right now. It ain't his night. <laughs> but but that's Mac legendary. Like, yeah. Tilted the whole back. Like when I tell you everybody in the arena laugh, like niggas on his side laugh, niggas on Sway's side laugh, the, the owners was laughing, like, it was just like, nigga, what the fuck was that? To I me, mean, that's a legendary moment in the battle rap, man. And you know battle rap, you know, niggas drop change, act like they bullets, niggas throw cigarettes at niggas, like, n- niggas that got smack punch, kicked, uh, you know, niggas that got stone cold stun, niggas coming out like the Undertaker and shit. Doing goddamn toasty and all that kind of crazy they shit in battle. Fake caskets and shit. You said what? Niggas bringing fake caskets and shit. Yeah, you know, just crazy shit. So I, I was ready for for that, but that smack was like the best and the worst moment in battle rap and possibly just internet just fuckery history like that. 
Man, that might have to go go on one of our live streams. If we dissect that moment, it just what the fuck. But I know they'll probably flag it. But copyright claim there. How we post? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fuck it. We just gonna do the shit then. Let's get it. Yeah, let's get where the fuck this nigga Padawan go. That nigga done ducked out. <laughs> ducked off to the side. Hey man, what is it? Every week, man. I'm destined to do a fucking two man show now. Is that what we doing? Just a rotating I get face. I get pet. I get face. I get pet. Who I'm gonna get? Who I'm gonna get? What I'm gonna get? What I'm gonna get? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kevin Hart got a joke that in with what I'm gonna get, what I'm gonna get, and I don't know what it is, but for some reason in my brain right now, that's all I see is this little short, stomp ass nigga just who I'm gonna get it's like a damn Chucky it dog. Short but, motherfuckers can be physical comics, but you don't really see no big motherfucking physical comedians. Who? Nobody. You say you don't see no big physical. Big physical comedians, like most big motherfucking comedians, like I ain't talking about big in status. I'm talking about big and fat, big in stature. The motherfuckers don't move around a lot. You know what it is? You do have them, but most of them are usually white comedians that are big and throw their body around. Like I feel like those are more the ones you gonna oh, find. Yeah, Bert. The more Bert. big that you gonna find doing like that. Uh. Slapstick type, I'll jump into some shit, throw my weight around, use the fact that I'm bigger than everybody as a punchline type shit. Yeah. You, Bert Kreshner, Bert, I don't even, I can't pronounce his last name. Man. Use the so, black, um, black fat niggas be trying to be smooth like Biggie. They they want to come in like they the nigga, or you know, they either on a Lavelle Crawford, you know, or they on the Bruce Bruce. You know, hey baby, how you doing, player? Yeah, all right, look, you like a play cousin. You know, all that, that, that little slick talk shit. Fuck all that shit. Be a funny fat nigga. Because that's really what you is. So be a funny fat motherfucker. Hey, what do you mean? There you go. Yeah, life is too short, and you never know when you might get it back. Welcome to the podcast. Sorry, my Pat and Tiz. What's up, guys? Welcome to the oh, party. Show with three friends separated by distance, connected by brotherhood, having weekly conversations that you can join in on. And as always, I am one third of the partners, and I stumbled my way through that fucking intro, but we're going to keep it rolling. I'm your boy, Ted. Hi, niggas. Welcome. And I'm along with. <laughs> This is the motherfucking Padawan, dog. Nah, when you said, what's up, guys? That shit scared the shit out of me. That shit was loud on stereo. But it's the motherfucking Padawan, and I'm along with it. What's that, man? What's that, man? It's your boy, PNJCE, facing the plates, man, somewhere in the goddamn race. But we're going to finish it off successfully, as usual. What's going on, fellas? I'm high. This man. <laughs> it's one of them, uh, you know, one of those weeks, you know. I definitely talked to both offline. What the fuck? Nigga, I, hey, man. Hey, man, we still here. All right. Come back. <laughs> what are you doing? It's hot. I'm hot. Hey, <laughs> don't just roll me. Hey, hey <laughs> look, man, don't be just rolling on the camera, man. This ain't that type of shit, man. You put that shit on your OnlyFans, nigga. Now, now don't hear. This, 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 different, this is a different channel. You got to separate the two businesses. Now, I don't know what you do in your personal life and what you, you know, I don't know if you one of them cam boys or something, but hey, don't be doing nah, that shit. Nigga, no. I don't want to see that shit. Nah, nigga, no. <laughs> I ain't purchasing no token. <laughs> I ain't got nothing for you, chief. Nigga, I'm trying to marry the two worlds, nigga. Oh, <laughs> the I have an OnlyFans podcast. Hey, ain't no link, to, ain't no link to bio for um, other social media motherfuckers. That's it. Hey, yeah, yeah, ain't no, uh, uh. I ain't hey. trying to merge shit. Pasquale, no, <laughs> no. 
The only OF I want to have is a, got an H before it. The Hall of Fame, nigga. I don't, I don't, uh-uh. No, nigga. I'm straight. You be Man, Pat, you, you always start us off with a zinger, don't you? I didn't even... <laughs> Niggas <didn't> even be <laughs> warm anymore. God damn. Nigga, you okay. you you realize you took off a jacket to put on a yeah, fucking put on a hat. but you warm. Nigga, you fucking cold. Figure out what the hell you is, Jordan. Go get your blood check, nigga. Get your hair right. It was just a little too warm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. A little too I got the little heating and shit on and whatnot. Come on, man. Take care of yourself. You ain't supposed to be chilling like that and then heating up real quick. Nigga, you going through male menopause. Nigga took off his jacket because he was warm and immediately put on a hot ass beanie with locks. So you know that shit hot, y'all. That shit double trapping. That shit insulated as fuck. I really like the hat. Nigga scalp sweating like a motherfucker. Lucky he don't got no Beijing. That shit would be rain and black. It's it's rain rain black. black. God I damn know, it. I knew, I knew y'all niggas. I knew y'all you niggas. <laughs> I knew y'all niggas y'all. Go Come on now. <laughs> Come on now. What be that? Shit. Yo, yo. I don't Damn, know my, my 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 motherfucking. There you go. There you yeah. go. Now yeah. we're in Wagwan. Wagwan. Man, I'll yeah. hey, It'll be one of them nice, I guess, the technical difficulties. And Pod Fuck Squad, it. y'all fuck around and deal with this shit every week. So God bless y'all, because uh, who knows what y'all be thinking. Um, but we love y'all for it. So shout out to y'all. And uh, this is episode 111. And, um, welcome one, back. One, one. Um, I feel like I've been playing hopscotch the past couple of weeks. I was telling Faith, like, I either get Faith or I get Pat. Or I get Faith. Or I get pet, and it's been kind of like you know alternating. So it's good to have you know the full squad fully you know reemerged and, and, and back on the scene. So let's not even waste no time for the people no more, man. Let's go ahead and get off into talking this shit this evening, man. What we talking about? Hey, well, uh, I I rethought my I rethought my shit I put in, but. Damn it. Fuck it, let's go for it, man. I still got some part of it I want to talk about. All right, now traditions, 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 traditions meet in modern time. A lot of traditions are kept, a lot of traditions go. I want to talk about a few things that got traditions in it that need to fucking go. Um, first thing, traditional <laughs> eating in the black community. What? You don't like Tradition- I love eating. Eating is so amazing. I love eating. But that tra- our traditional eating, our the soul food. Oh no! No! Yeah. No! No! That shit ain't healthy. Fish that shit ain't healthy for that. That shit ain't healthy at all, man. Olive green. That shit ain't healthy. I mean, that shit is not healthy for us, man. And every and, and, and every year we talk about people talk about how how it's not healthy. We need to change this. But every holiday we eat the same shit. Every holiday the menu don't change. You may add in one thing and take out something else, but. The main course is stay the main unhealthy motherfucking courses with the same unhealthy uh, additives. Let's, let's, let's change it up, man. I, I know it's a tradition and, and it's been in our households for decades upon decades upon decades. Oh, but no. damn. Nigga. How, how many who, diabetic relatives are we going to have, man? Grams? Them damn... Uh, yeah, I've been telling her the same shit. I've been telling her the same shit for years. You, you need to stop eating this shit. I would say. Need to stop eating this shit. I can't go all the way there with you. I would say let's get rid of it. I would say let's do more moderation. Have it okay, I can I can meet you in the middle. I can meet you in the middle. We I can meet you in the middle with that. Let's, let's, let's moderate. You feel me? Let's add some he- more healthier variations to these holidays with I some of the old shit. Baby. Ooh, yeah. That shit hit like grit. And I don't even like grit. Yeah. But motherfuckers eat all this unhealthy traditional food. Let's let's look at the chitlins. I don't know what motherfucking household eat them shits. That, that, stop doing that shit. Stop that. I don't give a fuck. 
how you cook? You eating you eating shit line shit. Yeah, shit line with shit. You got to you got to clean them and clean them and clean them and clean them. Nothing you had you shouldn't have to eat nothing that you got to clean more than once. Why is that? No. Be shit line. <laughs> Who the fuck would you? No, nigga, no. Shit. You buy a bucket of shit that's lined with shit that you gotta take it out of the bucket and clean the shit. You are eating. Shit at the shit at the shit. At the shit. Nah, fuck that. Bucket of pig asshole. Fuck that shit. Nah, fuck that. Cancel you that shit. shit. Cancel shit. that bullshit. Your mouth. Cancel that bullshit. Another thing I want to fucking cancel is traditional. That ain't, it's not even our tradition. It's another cultural tradition, but let's fucking cancel it. Motherfucking arranged marriages. Let's cancel them shits. Yeah, arranged fucking like marriages. If it, I've met several people who had arranged marriages, more more than a handful. I met at least 50, 20 to 50 motherfuckers in my, in my last two years that had arranged marriages. And most, majority of motherfuckers did not like the motherfucker they was a, a married to, still married to that motherfucker, and then got another wife or husband somewhere else. Is it part Let's of that shit? That's a waste of fucking time. Sure, some monetary value is being exchanged on some other end because of traditions or whatever. But some traditions need to come to some type of halt, man. Like all traditions don't need to be continuously kept. Because at the end of the day, we are a new people. We have a new mindset, and shit is at a new, uh, 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 a higher level state than shit was when some tradition started. So, shit, the fuck. Mm -mm. Let's get past some of this shit and start new traditions. But those are the hard thing to do. Motherfuckers want to keep the old bad ones, but never want to start no new good ones. Nah. Marriage thing. No I, I I don't know. It, it, if it's a part of somebody's culture and the kids grow up and that's what they into and that's their family thing and that's their business, I, I don't really like I, I think maybe in America or like in our country it might not fit. So like let's make it not a thing here. I can roll with you there, but I don't know what them niggas do over there and I don't really care. You know, like in them countries where they be doing that shit on the regular. Okay, so like say, and they know they most motherfuckers like it's a oh. lot of people that say American values are trickling in everywhere, which may be true, because we everywhere, Americans is everywhere. We it ain't no part of the globe that we don't try to touch. So I mean, that's just big bad America. But instead of that, when the cultures come over here and they still try to, how can I, how can I say, what's the correct way to say it? When people come over here with their culture and they try to still hold true to their cultural beliefs, or not even over here. When over there and people are aging out of the traditions, you feel me? Like, like I say, people like some people feel the same way like I do. Like some tradition need to change. So you have a large sect in that tradition or that religion who don't believe in the traditional arranged marriages, but they still got to partake in it because that's the tradition they got to do. But once it happens, they be like, "Ah, right, that's done. I'm gonna still gonna go get mine. I had to do this. I had to do this bullshit. Yeah, I got this one over here." I got Lala La Loopsy over here. Sure, I, I got to be married to her. I can't do nothing about that because my uncle and my mama set that up and they got some land traded or some other. That's that. But yeah, I'm in love with this one over here. So I'm going to marry her too. I feel you. I definitely think, uh, I I definitely understand. And I, with that, I think my only apprehension comes from the, I find it hard to speak on somebody else like culture or whatever just because like i don't want nobody saying shit about mine like i feel like i want to do what the hell i want to do based on whatever my culture is and i don't really and if it need to be police like i'll handle that then but i don't really want like, i don't really think somebody from the outside may understand it like i don't understand it enough outside of just knowing that it happens and knowing that you know i definitely wouldn't want to have had somebody pick who the fuck i gotta be with like yeah. not I even like I, I wouldn't have wanted like my mom trying to be like like you gotta go with this girl like this gotta be your girlfriend even like i don't want no like no just let me like who the fuck i like and if they like me back then shit we, we roll with that and that's life like i don't want all that weird shit like no because you yeah, might one thing from over there you're like his you ain't parents got... trying to raise some but his uncle jumped in front of that shit and arranged something with the, with somebody totally different with a different girl 
that fucked up the whole shit with his whole family. So his uncle was like, I'm taking control of this. You're going to marry her. Fuck with your, fuck with your mom and daddy. Say, you're going to marry this one because of this business deal. So he ended up having to marry that joke, but <laughs> there goes that. Well, damn. <laughs> well, damn. But that's my little round tradition that need to end, change, or get altered. You feel because I, at a I, certain I, point, everything needs to change, man. Every, at, at a certain point, everything does change. It needs to change. You can't stay stagnant. Stagnant things bring problems. Just like stagnant water. Shit. You said stagnant water? Yeah. That should breed flies. You yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> you right. That should breed flies. <laughs> Don't nobody like that. I do I do think that there's a lot of like societal norms and stuff that can be updated. Like I definitely agree with you there. I, I don't know that like I think it's gonna be you know what I think? I think the societal norm that need to be changed the most is like it gotta become commonplace for people to be accepting of not caring about other people's shit. Even like, not even can I conform? But like, you know, if you want to conform, that's your business. I, I, you, but I think that's to be the key. Like, that should be the driving factor. Like, that's your business. Like, unless unless it comes over here to like, however you want to marry. If you want to marry a donkey and a Chevy, and have and live in a polyamorous relationship with them, then that's that person being it like that ain't got nothing to do with me as long as you ain't fucking that donkey or that Chevy on my property or that's not my fucking donkey or my Chevy. Like outside of that, like what you do ain't really doing nothing to me. It's so weird. You roll up on you and be like, look, man, I'm in love with your Chevy trying to marry. Yeah, now, 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 now that's going to be when it becomes uncomfortable because now you brought it to my front porch. But if you yeah. and your yard, if you in your yard wiping your Chevy down and you get an erection and you take your Chevy into your garage and close the door and you get your hot buttery love on with your with your Chevy and your donkey is in there too and all I hear is hee haw vroom, vroom. nigga it's on your I'm property I'm that's no different than me fucking the shit out of my wife in the garage here. Like I, I can't be mad at that, and it's not doing anything to me. Like I can go into the the part, the major part of my house, and not know that that's necessarily happening. Really, outside of your car revving, which is no different than anybody driving up and down the street, I, I, it, that ain't no big deal to me. Like I, I don't care, and I think that most people, if we get to that place of like, does it come over here? Why well, right, then? What the fuck you want to do? Like we judge a lot of shit too. Like I don't really care. I think that's the place that I'm getting to. The older I get, like I don't know whether it's like I'm approaching for this or it's getting like fuck it. And you're, <laughs> boy, you're right on that precipice, ain't you? <laughs> the time we see you again, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh last nigga. But um anyway, uh I think that as I get older and I push that age as well, you know what I mean? I think the the fuck it and the just like yeah, fuck it, all right. The shit that I'm invested in is it, like the circle is closing, like it's it's getting closer and closer to like home and like my immediate sphere, my people uh my, my loved ones and shit, not like like what once it extends to the place, even in like my familial structure, to the place where it doesn't have an effect on like me emotionally or physically, like tangibly, it's not really a thing until it becomes a thing, kind of shit. <laughs> like, all right, well, oh what? Yeah. <laughs> Be walking on his eyebrows and burning himself. What is he happy? How the, how the fuck did he walk okay. on his eyebrows? Man, look, that's a, that's another thing I've learned in life, man. I don't oh, understand it for it to be a thing and for it nope. to not have to be my thing. Like nope. there's <laughs> things, girl. What y'all teach me about? It was one of the first things that I actually learned new. On the pod, like it was like some breathtaking shit. 
What was they? What was the 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 pugs? Pegging. Putting the put the pegs. The peg. The pegging. Peggy. Yup. Peggy Bundy. Yup. That shit. That right there. Evil. Nigga. Don't have to understand it. Don't have to get why people would like it. Do not have to get that. That's word. Guess what? Before I knew about Pagan, it did nothing to my life. Since I've learned about Pagan, it's done yeah. to my life. My life has pretty much remained on the same equilibrium and the same normal occurrences have continued. I don't have to understand. It don't have to be my thing. And it doesn't encroach upon my, my area. So, hey, dude, people just, just just live with the thought in mind of like, maybe don't worry about other people's business and make sure that you that your business doesn't be all up in somebody else's. Like, make sure that your business doesn't be like, oh, damn, that's fucking up this person's ability to be able to handle their business. Or now they can't enjoy their business because your business all loud and annoying and encroaching and, and aggressive and making them want to fuck you up. You know? And that be happening in life. You know? Well, fucking neighbor or something, you know, just be doing weird shit. When I marry my lesbian couple, I don't want to hear y'all say shit. That's all hey, I can that's say. All, you know what? I would be happy that you're settled down and married. That would be a beautiful thing. I wouldn't even I be, know, I, I hey, better be involved in the goddamn wedding. Bruh, it would actually fit you more than anything. Out of everybody, you being in a ending up in some polyamorous marriage would not be like abnormal for you. Like I could see you in some, some like alternative lifestyle being your normal and that being the way that you end up being married. I could see that. Yeah, I was I've been waiting on that. I've been waiting on Pat to say, hey y'all. Either a lesbian or like a, <laughs> some type of unconventional relationship where like it's not like it's some pet, it's some pet type shit. It's not a marriage like mine, I would say. Like it's not like traditional old school like face was talking about. It wouldn't be that. I I, I almost be that type shit. being uncomfortable for you. And I could see that the girl that you would end up with, I don't see that being comfortable for her personality type. Like I don't know. I'm just saying, yeah, that so make gonna go on some fucking tantric sex escapade over in India where y'all fuck like thirty Indian people in some type of harem and nah, I don't like, I don't know, take ayahuasca know. And, and and smell of higher levels and reach some alternative plane where y'all are able to like now fuck with your eyebrows on command and just make each other nut by doing this wiggle shit or something like it's gonna be some weird shit, but it's gonna be like. Some shit that fits you and makes you just like, oh, all right, that works for him. Makes sense. All right. <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> the only thing that would surprise me is if you came and was like, hey, I'm having an old, regular, old, leave it to be for, you know, regular, traditional marriage. The wedding I could see being pretty normal. I could see that part. Now, I want to be dressed up like a, a gold pharaoh flying from the sky. From the, like from a zip line, and then I would present her like this. I'm okay. flying in like this. That, no, I'm joking. That's been in like Malachi Z York, man. What kind of bullshit? Is this a marriage or a circus? <laughs> what the fuck is happening, man? Coming in on the goddamn what? On the what? You'll come in on the what? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Wait one second, y'all. Give me one second. I'll be right back. I got to get back to my keys. I got to find my keys. It takes a second to find his keys in the middle of the pod. Where are you going? I'm not going nowhere. I'm getting somebody. Pod squad, this is the shit I be dealing with. See, this is the shit. (laughs) See, (laughs) I wonder why I give him a hard time because he gives us a hard time too. It'd It'd be reciprocal. He don't give me shit. Where are you about to go, Pat? I ain't going nowhere. Somebody need to get something out of the car. Mm-hmm. Pat. Can take, hey, you a part? <laughs> oh, man. Most awkward situation today. Mm. Well, it was awkward for me. 
because I never be there. So it was very weird to be there. All right. <laughs> so I so I, I'm out the day, right? You know, I got my main little gig that I do, and then I be Uber eating on the side, right? So I'm out Uber eating today, and this delivery come up to this part of Atlanta that I ain't really never been to. Well, I, you know, it be coming up as the address all the time, so you don't really know where you at till you get mm -hmm. there. <laughs> and the shit is so awkward, bro. And I feel like such a, a incel or a sucker. I, I don't know the right word for it, but I felt real low about myself as a <laughs> as a left. But anyway, so <laughs> oh, yeah, this, this, he's laughing right. hard, so this got to be him. Right? Yeah, so I'm Uber eating, right? And get the address. I'm like, oh, the fuck, I'm going. All right, so I'm pulling up to this place. And the place that I pull up to, I'm like, okay, now I kind of know the area I'm in. I'm, I'm like near, uh, I'll tell you, pet off air, but it's a well known street once I got there. But the direction that I was going, I was like, who the fuck am I, am I delivering it to? Then all of a sudden, I just kind of popped up on this street, and then I was like, right here at this place. So I pull around because I can't find the door. But I look at the note, you know, when you Uber Eat or Lyft or whatever, it always be like a note from the restaurant when you go pick up the food. And then when you go deliver the food, it always be like a note from the customer that's like, punch in this code at the gate, drive around here, wait in the car, ring the doorbell and take a photo, uh, use this pin number. It's always some type of note that lets you know how to get the food to them or whatever. Mm -hmm. So this uh, come to meet at door, then it said, come inside. So I'm like, what the fuck? You want me to meet the door from the side? So I get to the door and I'm looking at the door and I'm like, okay, so it's a door, but then it's another door. <laughs> then I realize what the sign say. <laughs> so I'm pulling up at fucking Fanny's Cabaret with an eight piece nugget and some waffle fries from Chip. <laughs> right? So I'm confused as fuck. I'm like, <coughs> is at the strip club ordering eight piece nugget and waffle fries. Kid you not. I immediately open the door. Now mind you, there's no security. There's no nobody there to take a charge. It's just walk on in. I walk on in. Obviously 90% of the population is naked. So the two ladies at the front are like, you were door dash? I was like, <laughs> no, nah, Uber Eats. Then the main lady on the stage is like me and titties in this new face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's me. Come on. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> With the bag of Chick-fil-A and she giving this dude like a, a dance or some shit. <laughs> Nigga, I didn't know what to do. So I just took, I just dipped my head and was like, you welcome to walk the fuck on the body there. I was so confused. It was such a weird <laughs> array of scenery that was so out of my element for so long that like it was like nigga what the hell did it, what is happening and that then it's no no that, that's your world for sure yeah. but for me like now imagine this pod squad you're talking to a man that pretty much kind of stopped going out somewhere around my 20 third 24th birthday somewhere in there uh it was pretty much close to after i had moved down here to georgia and i, I might have had like maybe a year left in me where i would go back and visit facing them and i would you know we hit a club or, or a bar or something and go out and get it in but more for the most part like going going out period to a club or bar has just been something that's out of my wheelhouse for some years now but adding to that fact, strip clubs have never been a thing that I was like necessarily like I've always to be this ain't no toot toot of a horn. It's just like there's always been plenty of options to have naked women around if it 
if if I if I wanted to or had a desire at any moment. So it wasn't like I needed to be like, let's go to a place and spend money at this place to then spend more money. I think I've been to like before this moment. I had been to like two strip clubs in my life, like one with face. I believe no, 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 no. Yeah, one with face, I think, and then one, was, and then one with uh, it was me, Poop, and uh, her cousin when we first went up to Rhode Island. When we first visited Rhode Island, he, his uh, he had people and shit that ran a, a strip club, so he took all of us up there. So we all went, but that's never been my thing. Like I. I don't even want to spend no more. Oh no, three times because my homeboy had a bachelor party when we went out to Cali when uh they got married. So yeah, three times in my life before this. So like that's period. Now these three times is like way before I stopped going out. So like this is like fuck am I walking into? And then the scene of like it's like the now this the daytime. I'm about to go. Like I'm Uber eating in like the hour or two before I go pick up my son from school. <laughs> so this ain't like the 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 baller crowd of that you you know I make it rain on it ain't no chains and you nah, know that not, shit up in here. This ain't the flossy crowd. This is like the, the truck I'm driver. here for the food or I'm really like just desperate to see some ass and titties right now. Like I have I'm. That's all I got. My life is at a weird place right now. So I'm, I'm in there, and it's just the sad sight of these sad, lonely guys. These women just standing at the door, naked, but just looking like, yeah, girl, you were door dash. All right. <laughs> and then, like, this dude's in there, this lady. Just like she the main girl on the stage, so she like center stage and she like gyrating titties in his face, and she just like, Yeah, that's me, and reach out and grab the bag. <laughs> a nugget is an eight piece nugget, it's a waffle fries, bro. Did she have a drink with it? No, it's just the eight piece nugget and the waffle fries, and it's not Did like oh, we'll give it to her and she'll put it back in the thing for no, she. She grabs this shit on the stage, like thank you, baby, and like it's part of the show. She had to nibble these nuggets while she's nibbling this nigga nuggets. I'm like, what kind of ratchet ass lap dance are you getting? Like, what? Where? Where am I? Sound like some shit that would happen to me. When I tell you, face, you right. It was some boom. It was some. It was like black boomers. It was like a black boomer, Joe. It was like if you if you took the the general premise of boomers, but put black culture on it and black people, that is what it. Yes, yes, that is what it is. Lord Jesus. <laughs> now imagine. Now, now tell you. Now let me tell you about boomers. By the time we went to boomers. I, I would venture to say me, Face, and Chewy are at some astronomical numbers. So ass and titties is not nothing new to us. Not a big thing. But this was our first time like as a collector coming down to Atlanta. We like, yo, we gotta go to a strip club, right? Now, we don't know what part of Atlanta we in. We don't know shit about Atlanta. We, we just here in Atlanta. Young as fuck, just out there. All right. So we, I don't even know how we found this place. I, I don't know whether we just went riding up the street and just like happened to stumble upon it or what. Because it won't know GPS is really like that. But it was like, I think a Tom Tom or a Garmin might have been made, but they was like expensive and like nobody you knew had them. Like it wasn't like talked about. It wasn't like commonplace. So like, like niggas was still on chirps and shit back then, and like regular flip cell phones and shit. Yeah, thirty more minutes to your. You your just had, 
trying to find it. You, you just had like maybe a 10 second to five second video or something and like pictures. That was like the shit. Oh, you can take a picture. Because a picture from that weekend ended up being legendary. So, but anyway. So, we find this place called Boomers, Pat. When I tell you this was like the most rinky-dink as biker type strip club with like the skinny anorexic looking chicks. Like, so like the strip obviously club. all Caucasian, you know, but they just like super thin, you know, little boy body type shit. Little like little 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 uh Thailand girls. So I, I don't know. But they were just real skinny, little skinny little girls. So the little skinny little white girl come over to our table. Now we don't know that much about strip clubs. We know you post a tip and throw money if they if you if you ask them for a lap dance or if they dancing on stage and you want a tip, you throw the money. We sitting at a at a table in the joint, right? We done paid the little cover charge. We sitting at the table. We trying to first of all just get some drinks before we even get another further. Can we just get some? Get some drinks over here, right? Uh huh. So we working on that, and the little skinny girl <laughs> comes uh wiggling on up, and she asks, "Can I dance right here?" Nigga sitting there like, cause you know how that shit be like. You sitting at the table, but the table connected kind of to the stage area. It's like they can walk over. And then stand up like on each individual table. They got like little stairs, and then they got the main stage area that branch off. You know what? You've never been to a strip club, shit. I ain't got to explain this shit, oh, y'all. Yeah, definitely not. But anyway, so she started <laughs> doing her little dance, and me, and, mind you, we're still trying to get a drink. So we sitting at the table, like you know, trying to get a drink and shit. And she's sitting there, you know, dancing on the thing or whatever. I think uh Foose might have pulled out a dollar and you know tossed that in there. It, it won't Foos. it's like oh, doing that. She was just there. So we sitting there talking and shit. Next thing I know, she looked down and like that'll be $15. Now mind you, we all sitting here in like expensive button up shirts. Expensive jeans, Jordans, throwback jerseys. Like we're we're not sitting here like money in the pocket. Like we're we're not sitting here broke. But for some reason, when she said that, we was like, "What the fuck you mean? Pay you? We didn't ask you to come over here, man. We we act, like, we literally asked for no service from you. You just asked, could you dance right there? And we said, if you want to. And then we went on about our conversation. Why do we owe you? What are we paying you for? Cut to 35 seconds later. We are promptly uh being asked to leave the club very loudly by security. And this lady chasing us. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You owe me $15. Oh, now, I don't know what that got to do with anything, but it was like the worst. I think that might be why I never went back to strip clubs. It was just like, what the fuck? This is extortion. Who are we to pay $15 for what? I still ain't got my drink. But yeah, that was the story of Boomers. But Boomers, you had to see it. It was very ratchet. And this place looked like a black Boomers. It was very like, oh, okay. I see what y'all did there. Y'all just took Boomers and moved it over here and was like, hey, let's go some black people. So a little black music in there. We got Boomer too. I love Boomer. <laughs> <laughs> Boomer sooner. I don't know now. I'm now so, just going. So she, now, she danced. I'm, she just danced in front of you. She didn't really like interact, touched, nothing. No, th this is all right. So if I could say, this is literally the all right. Um, okay. So it's like. This hand, hold on. All right, the the further and further I get away from you is the where she's at. All right, so the mic is where she's at. Right. Mm -hmm. There's a glass door. Then there's uh -huh. like 
blackout doors, like these actual doors you got to pull open to even see what's passing. All right. So I come through the glass door. Then I pull the blackout door and immediately standing right here. Titties. Just two butt naked ladies sit there who turn around and look at me as if I've like moved their standing post or something like they were leaning or something like I bothered their day. You were doing that. No, I'm with Uber Eats. Before I could even tell them the name, I look up. It's a stage. It's like three or four ladies dancing on the stage. It's people sitting. It's people. Okay, so it's three folks. Like the stage is coming this way. No. I, I'm talking about that when you were talking at the Boomers or whatever, the white girl that charged you 15 or whatever. Uh -huh. she, she was. No, she ain't touched nobody. She stood if she stood on the all right. So again, yeah. the place is set up. It's like a stage that extends out. The tables come out kind of all from the stage. We sitting at one of them tables. So like the way the tables are set up, like there's like little I don't know how to explain it, but there's like little steps where like the ladies can stand on the table. So like when they had a stage full, they can have ladies on the table and have everybody kind of up dancing. You know how they do them type nights or whatever so that's how the tables are set up so we sitting in there it's a lady on the stage dancing it's you know ladies walking around or whatever and then it's a, a lady maybe in the back or something on one of them tables and then we sitting there at one of these tables like maybe midway through the club and the lady literally just came up and was like hey can i dance here we looked at each other, was like, we don't care, and went back to talking because we, again, we we tried to get our drink. We tried to get fucked up, and then like we already looking at this place, like, what the fuck we just stepped into this shit? Because you're looking at the quality of lady, it ain't exactly what you think of when you think Atlanta strip club. Yeah. So we just looking like. All right, well, let's get a drink. So we talking and shit. We're literally sitting there laughing about shit that done happened at the at the hotel, shit that we done seen at the mall, shit that done happened back at ODU. Because at this time, this is where we coming from. Like we done went on vacation from ODU. So we sitting uh -huh. there talking about what happened on campus, just shooting the shit, waiting on the drinks. She's sitting up there gyrating and doing what strippers, how all strippers dance, but it ain't like, oh, I'm directing it to you or him or this other nigga at the table <laughs> dancing and shit and we talking and then all of a sudden <laughs> one of the songs went off and she just looked down and was like hey y'all owe me $15 and we just looked at each other like who? Who do? <laughs> who do that? Who do who, are you? Who, what? That's not how who, it works why? here. How do what? Why? And again I know I, I know somebody put it in the comments no. Let us know. Maybe we just didn't understand strip clubs back then. And again, it might have been the reason that I just stopped going immediately. <laughs> but I didn't, I don't understand what you was charging me for, ma'am. I You did something you wanted to do and then you want me to pay you for it? I don't get it. I really didn't understand. So we got promptly kicked out again, like I said. So uh, I don't know. But yeah, no, she didn't do anything. Like it was no lap dance. So let me get you it going for good service. Rub on your, uh, let me let me put my arms around you and rub a, a, a feather boa around somebody's neck at the table. Uh -huh. or, no, it was, I'm dancing up here on the table while these niggas are sitting here talking. And, you know, like, hey, <laughs> you owe me $15. And we all just looked at each other like, who do? Basically, and we probably got uh put out by security because she wouldn't told him. Uh, but if she hadn't said that, we was just gonna sit there because she had walked off. We was she was like we was like oh no we don't. <laughs> we just kept sitting there. Oh shit! Yeah, we were still waiting on our. I still ain't get my drink. I I promise you, I did not. My order was taken. Drink was not taken. Yeah. So uh that was boomers, and uh that's why Tiz doesn't go to strip clubs to this day, which is what made today's uh delivery so awkward. <laughs> I tell you this. What I will do 
the next time I will Google Maps, whatever that motherfucking uh, address is, before I just hop my ass up on it. I tell you that. I Google Maps addresses. I look at the little uh, what is the little block to show like how it really looks. Or whatever. I, I turn around that shit. I look at all around that shit just to see where the fuck I'm going. Nigga, you know the first thing went through my head, and I ain't gonna get too much deeper, but. God damn it, I'm in here trying to make my marriage stronger. I ain't got time for nobody to fuck around and see my ass or something that know me from teaching or something. Like, hey! Exactly. Ain't that, ain't that Miss T's husband? Oh, shit. How you going in there? And oh. I got food. I look like I'm showing up to, to bring base some fucking lunch. Nigga, fuck this. <laughs> I, I got the transaction record, but like the shit look oh, like as a and, and maybe this is where I differ. Maybe this is why I've been with my woman monogamous for this long and mm -hmm. been able to be. But like that's the type of shit I think about. Like I think about I, I would do or what anybody in my circle gonna do or anybody even in the room with me gonna do is how does this look? Mm -hmm. How will like what will be the narrative that can come from this? And I've I've done a very good job of staying out of those weird. No, no, no! Don't that catch means. me there, no, nigga. That so means. today, I you, know, you sitting there working, and you like, oh, and and the fucked up part is because it's because I don't know fucking. You mute, mute it, you mute it. You mute it, nigga. He got it. But yeah, if I had kept my, my damn ass out here in Douglasville, I'd be fine. But it was the fact that I, I, I fucking took my black ass over there to Atlanta to do the movie. And then I don't know Atlanta. I know where I worked at in Atlanta, but I don't know Atlanta. So <laughs> them addresses be popping up and I'd be like, fuck am I? like again, the street I ended up on, if y'all know, if well, I done said the name of the place, so people out there know exactly the location. But the, the street that is on, everybody knows. It's out there about Fulton Industrial. Oh, no, I know that one. I mean, you know that one? Yeah, I know that one. You know that street. Like, everybody knows the street because it's like one of the major roads in fucking Atlanta. But <laughs> I didn't know where the fuck I was going until I got there. I literally was riding was like, what the fuck is this damn? Because you know the little Uber Eats GPS. First of all, it don't look like fucking Google Maps. Which can be upsetting to me because I've rode with the same GPS format for so long. Anything else already just be like, okay, well, what, what, where is this place at? What, what, how, where is this turn? What, which one of these turns is it? Is this the street? So that's how I'm already riding. And then I'm pulling up it through these streets and these residential neighborhoods that I ain't never seen before. So now I'm like, where am I going? Then all of a sudden I pop out on the street that I actually do know. And the first park a lot I turn into already sketchy. It's like a one of them uh, little toy shops. And then it's like a warehouse or an industrial place right beside it. A toy shop? Yeah, like one of them little... Uh, what you like for Priscilla's the little sex toy shits? What do you mean like Priscilla's little porn shops? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So they got that, and then it's like a warehouse, and then the GPS is taking me behind this place. So I'm looking at the GPS like the GPS the never take you in you the know? right place. I'm I'm like, I know this motherfucker ain't got his phone as his crib or her phone as her crib, and she's sitting there hiding behind the fucking porn place. <laughs> Weird shit am I about to pull up on? And then I pull around and it's an actual gentleman's club. And then I, I proceed to have the experience that I outlined. But it's just like it's just like, yo. Story time. Yeah, I used to love doing that shit. I don't want no more time with kids this year. I'm good. Done with 2023. Yeah. I used to love doing the door dance shit. It'd be a different experience every day. 
Sounds like y'all deal with a whole yeah. lot of fucking. I like my, I like my normal routine. Go to restaurant, pick up food. Go to place, put food on somebody's porch, take a picture, walk the fuck off. <laughs> there you go. Get a tip. <laughs> Thank you kindly. Maybe have to text to get their pen number so I can complete the delivery. You I'm ever like, have somebody text you and ask you to do some other shit while you get in there or like get on some extra sauce or some shit? Nigga, no. Yeah. Oh, now, like if they be like, oh, you they like, uh, grab extra Chick Fil A sauce or something like that. No, like when you get in your when you get in the order, they be like, hey, they'll text you through the app, be like, hey, while you there, can you get me some extra sauce? Yeah, like I'll be at Chick Fil A or something, and somebody be like, hey, can you get some extra Polynesian? Yeah, or uh, yeah, I've done that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I had one time I'm right. there, there, there. I was like, yeah, if you give me an extra tip, shit. Oh no, I ain't getting you no extra shit. I ain't buying nothing. No, I ain't buying nothing, motherfucker. Give me my tip for asking you for asking for something. I'm this motherfucker. I don't supposed to ask for shit. I'm Ooh, a delivery motherfucker. This though, yo, and I don't know if it, it's the same for when you did DoorDash or not. But what a burn your biscuits is, you beat the you beat the 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 expected time by like a real good margin. You hella cordial. You got you like follow their directions to a T. All of that good shit, right? And the trip was originally like a fifteen dollar trip or something, right? That's including the tip. And then all of a sudden they take the tip back and they drop it down after you done completed the delivery. Oh no, they couldn't do that on DoorDash. Oh, see on Uber Eats, like, and I know this because I'm a customer of Uber Eats too. So like when I order, I know that I can like I can edit the tip pretty much at any point. Until I actually like until the whole thing is finished processing, so like they can get delivered, it, and then I can go back in right then and be like, "Nope, they dropped my food, or it was hella shit missing out my bag." Mm -hmm. I can drop the tip down, so like people be doing that. You couldn't do that. Shit, right? and if you in a low traffic zone where like not a lot of drivers at. Uh you will be sitting there, and you ain't gonna take that drive unless it's gonna be like worth your while. So you ain't about to get up for no like the actual fee of the thing is like three dollars. So that's what you actually would get. But then you get, you know, Uber Eats will show you what you get plus the tip as the total. Mm -hmm. So the shit will say eight dollars, and five of that is the tip. And then next thing you know, you only get like four seventy five. Why? But they give you like a, a hell of a good rating. So you be like happy about the rain, but you be like, nigga, you could have <laughs> me in cash, bitch. <clears throat> you me my fucking cash out, nigga. Uh, my 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 PayPal, my my god damn it, you could have slid me five dollars under the table. Yeah, I had a couple of fucking cash in the hand. Slap me five dollars. I done got cash in the hand. I done got motherfucking cash apps. I done got motherfucking just. Come on, take me too. Uh, good luck, shit. Motherfucker, gave me bud. But you gotta remember, I, I just do that in the hood, so. No, I'm out in a, a more uh, suburban area. You know, yeah, that's good, that's good. my average, my average Uber Eats customer, I've never seen him. It, it, my average direction is just leave that door, take photo, do not ring doorbell. Yeah, see, I don't fuck around random motherfuckers. I grew up with like um, you know, um, uh, shit, can't say names. <laughs> shit, um, <laughs> I just, yeah, type um, it in the chat. Oh, um, type it private. in the chat. I right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> or. Or foos it. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Either way, you gonna know it. Oh. <laughs> I think that's how you spell that shit. Oh! Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Right that nigga, man. Oh, oh shit. Oh, Fafi. Yeah. Fafi. <laughs> Fafi. So I was like, nigga, he's like, he's like, homie. <laughs> Smoke to blow with the nigga. <laughs> Yo, I know, I know one thing. Feffy Jeeves got big. Yeah. My yeah. grandma, 
My grandma called me one day out in the blue and was just talking. And out of nowhere, she was like, you still be hanging with Feffy, Feffy, Feffy Jeeves? I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, grandma. I ain't seen him in a minute. You know, when he left school and, you know, I left school, like, we just kind of fell out of touch or whatever. She was like, that, long. that boy blew up. That boy blew up. He fat as a tick. I started. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I got weak. And then she showed me the picture, nigga. Woo! Oh, yeah, my man healthy. My man eating good, though. He got a nice little family with him and shit. Eating good in the neighborhood, nigga. Got a nice little position with the school. Had that talk with him. That nigga was doing good, man. Smoked the blood with that nigga for a little bit. I'm like, all right, I'm going, man. I got to get his neck delivered. (laughs) Be surprised, nigga, you run into. Teflon. Yeah, damn. A lot of motherfuckers out here be ordering that, ordering that shit for their kids and shit. You go to the house, a little motherfucker come to the door. Like, why the fuck your nuts come to the door? That's dumb. Oh, yeah, they be away from the house. Mm-hmm. Like, that's dumb and shit. Y'all realize niggas be snatching little niggas these days? That's stupid. I never do that shit. Yeah, she's crazy. She's crazy. Oh, yeah. I'm bad for that abrupt exit. Uh, talking shit about folk. God tried to get me back. I would make me piss on my damn self. <laughs> he will do that. He will do that. Oh, shit. Oh, and no, did. just put hand sanitizer on. I did not wash my hands. I ain't going to need lie, but I'm in my own motherfucking house. Fuck y'all. <laughs> he will do that. But yeah, where were we at? I'm sorry. Where were y'all? Where were y'all speaking on? I apologize for my abrupt. Uh, the misadventures of DoorDash and Uber Eats. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the only adventure I can know. My, like I said, my shit be boring. No, that shit was kind of like uh, that wasn't boring. <laughs> I think that shit was kind of entertaining to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you would have enjoyed it. For me, it was just, it was a, you know what it was? It was a, it was like the first moment of work related anxiety that I've had since I left the old job. Okay. So I got this one time. I pull up to this house, right? It's an old nigga sitting on the porch. I look at the address. I look at the app. All right, this it. I get out with the food. I'm like, how you doing, man? You order, you order food? Like, I don't know. You don't know. I'm like, what? <laughs> I, was, I was looking at the app and I look back at it. I was like, you don't know. Somebody hit name this. He's like, I don't know. I was like, so you telling me I'm about to eat this food? I'm like, what do you mean? I'm going to get right back. I'm like, look, man. I'm like, look, bro. Is this, is this such and such house? Like, I don't know. Ask them inside. I look at this nigga. Somebody else come to the door. He like, man, don't pay this, don't pay to this that old ass motherfucker. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, because I'm about to go back to the car with your food, nigga. This nigga ain't gonna, he don't know who he is. He's sitting on your porch. Right. Damn, fuck. Yeah. Who's this nigga? Who is this nigga? How does he not know, how does he not know anybody but he here? <laughs> and why are y'all allowing him to just be here? He just gave that nigga the food left. Like, man, fuck these shit. <laughs> Oh Be that was some weird shit. Once again, I, I delivered. That's the I used to deliver between Colonia Heights, Prince George, Petersburg, <laughs> Dinwiddie, Fort Lee, all of, all the areas in between. I, and the worst area for me used to be Hopewell, not because of the people, but just because of the that five point area. I hated driving in that area and had to deliver in that area because this shit that's apartments and houses that don't look like apartments and houses. Like it's regular businesses, right? But on the sides of the businesses, it's like house doors. Yeah. But you wouldn't think them as like places to live. Like you, I'm like, what the fuck are them doors doing right there? And, and there's numbers on. I'm like, that can't be where I'm supposed to go. 
I'm not. I'm about. I'm not about to go knock on somebody's business. Man, you better knock yeah. on the side. Of, on the side. No, no, the no, 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 nigga. I go to the joint, knock on the door. Motherfucker come to the joint. They robe. I'm like, oh, shit, this is a park. This is a house. He's like, yeah. I was like, okay. Hey, you fool. <laughs> door dash be wanting to come to the door and see you. I, I, I like Uber Eats for the. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, hey, yo, today was the weirdest. I had another one where I had to drop off to somebody face to face, but it was like a, a pediatric center or something. So it was just like putting it at the front desk and good day. But most of my shits on Uber Eats, like it's never you. You never like people don't want to talk to you. They just want to get their food and go on about their business. So they like, leave it my here. Put it here. Sure, sure it here. Food to another food place. Yo, now that, <laughs> that I have gotten where I just pull up and just drop that shit at the front desk and walk the fuck off. But I'm like, why am I coming to Burger King with McDonald's? <laughs> <laughs> you really don't like y'all y'all nuggets. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. No, that should be funny. Like, I, I don't even do shit. I still got the best nuggets. I don't care. Pink paste all day, bitches. Like, I don't want to get this shit. <laughs> well, Zach, well, actually, Zaxby's got the best nuggets if you consider their chicken tenders nugget. If not, then yeah. But that's neither here nor there. I digress. I've digressed far enough. Oh, hey, Pat. Oh, this is a long man. way to go from chitlins. <laughs> hey, Pat. <laughs> yeah. You at the time? Yeah, it's uh it's ten fifty. Um, it's episode one one one. Uh, it's Friday the thirteenth. Um, and that's always the day of fuckery for a lot of people. So it's time. Women and fuckery. Uh, not like I go through a lot of fuckery with the door dashes and, and Uber Eats and whatnot. That shit used to be fun. You know, it is, uh, even though Tiz fuckery he encountered today sound like my type of fuckery, but yeah, you can, you can, I, I wish it all upon you, sir. Tiz is fuckery sounded like your type of good. <laughs> now, 18, 19 year old Tiz, completely different story. Damn near 40 Tiz, married with a kid, got a reputation. <laughs> yeah, I'm good on all that, Chief. I don't want not a piece of static that come from it. Like, I boy, I wish you could have seen the way I just ducked my head and like immediately just was like, oh, here you go. Let me get the fuck out of here. Please don't nobody. Oh, Jesus Christ. How the fuck did, how the fuck did I take this delivery? Never fucking deliver from Chick-fil-A again. Let me see any meal. Let me see anybody order something that's supposed to be a fucking meal and they ain't got no drink. I ain't never taking that shit. No <laughs> kind of should have known it was some type of savage. Fuck kind of person no <laughs> nuggets and waffle fries and ain't got no fucking drink. That's salty ass, dry ass meal. You don't want no lemonade, no sweet tea, no Dasani. You don't want nothing. You just gonna you just gonna face that. That is stuck all in your molars. Should have known. But again, I digress. I apologize, Padawan. Looks like Padawan is frozen, though. So my rant, my my ramble might have helped. Hey, y'all. Hey, babe. Hey there, man. Yeah, Padawan and uh, Padawan has left. The He's left the building temporarily, but he'll be back. Yeah. But Just feedback more the But shit, back in these door dash stories. That shit used to be a trip, man. I used to try to stay away from the base because, you know, I used to smoke blood in the car to get there, Chad, so I can't go on base because motherfuckers can't go on base like that. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Them people probably don't really want to smell that when they can't get none. <laughs> no, you just can't make it past the checkpoint, nigga, shit. <laughs> shit. If you smell like weed, they won't let you pass. They can automatically check the car. What if it's it all before you got there? If I still smell it, they still go check the cops. Well, what if they done did the cops? 
Nine times out of ten, they still won't let you on for the for their suspicions. They'll let you on the Fort Lee base for a little little itty bitty shit. The fact that they won't let you on yet the, the debauchery and bullshit that go on on that fucking base that I've personally seen. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and literally, what you what they up the street from? Nigga, please. <laughs> you literally right up the street from 36. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. nigga. Shout out 94 Slagle Avenue, where I used to live. Y'all can go see the home of Tiz if you ever do a tour of Petersburg. The illustrious <laughs> Petersburg. Petersburg. Ranked, ranked number one or number two with its brother or sister city, Hopewell, <laughs> every year as one of the top two worst cities in the state of Virginia. <laughs> Petersburg. It's, it, it's been consistently at the top. Petey. But got to knock down that old ass hotel. Waiting for nothing else in the world. Fucking miss Petersburg as a kid. Mm -hmm. I would live there, but I do miss visiting sometime now. Just to like Sorry, see the shit. Name and shit. Next time I come to Virginia, I had to go. We had to go do a little ride around to Petersburg. Just go like to all the old stomping grounds. Go see the old Civic Center. See what they've done with that area. And that. Yeah. you know, you got to show me around because you know you you you've seen the transition. I, I, yeah. I missed. I, I, I can see. I can see the few new things. And I can show you everything that ain't changed out that bitch too. <laughs> I treat Petersburg <laughs> like a. The motherfucker would treat a prostitute. I get in and get the fuck out. I don't be trying to be in that motherfucker too long. Shit. I don't work in the city. I go through the city. I go see my motherfucking family. I'm out. You treat Petersburg like what? Like motherfucking treat prostitutes. They get in and get the fuck out. Okay. You hungry? <laughs> Who the fuck is that snacking? Like, God damn. You hungry? Oh, sorry. What you I'm eating, sorry. nigga? <laughs> what you eating? That shit you see you all the time back in the day. Bro, Man, Bruce listen. Nick. I'm going to tell you you got to do it, yo. I learned this from the first, like, 20 episodes when I used to have them Starburst packs rattling through the episode. I had to try to figure out how to get that shit out. You know what you do? <laughs> you take all your snacks and you pour them in Tupperware containers. <laughs> For one, the Tupperware don't make no noise, but for two, you now got a nice little container to just put your hand in throughout the, the thing without having to try to get to the bottom of the bag when you get low. You can just keep picking. Your, your pick flow. Uh, Snack hack. All right, brother Pete. That's what's going to do fucking read. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. bullshit. I, again. <laughs> sorry, the lights went out for five seconds. I'm back now. Um, we'll start oh. with good and but, uh, First, we're going to start with some good for once. So, um, and Hold on. Bassett. Before hmm? we get to the good, good, can we just say prayers out to the people out of Selma who got hit with that tornado? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, anybody who was affected by the, the, the crazy storms and almost tornadoes we had in Georgia, obviously, but yeah, I just heard That's tonight true. that Selma got hit pretty bad, so just, you know, shout out to them and prayers and support. Yeah, prayers prayers. Go ahead, Pat, my dri- fault. I was driving into the city and I saw like the clouds formating up, uh, form- formation and stuff. Formating. So they meant formating. I meant formation, and it was like they were like, you know, you just they just seemed like they were going like merging what? into each other, darker and 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 scarier. It just, uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back home. I'm gonna go back home before it gets too serious. As Nigga, soon as I start you, making that turn home, here on it, huh? Did you have a case of CTE live here on air when you first was explaining? And you, yeah. you know that 
transformated and they were closer and together. Scared. I, I drank a beer. And then you started talking normal again out of nowhere. Like, what the fuck just happened? Oh, okay. Uh, I got, I'm a little tipsy, yes. We got tipsy, Pat. Now, mind y'all, Pat is not a big drinker. He, he'll he smoke with you, but the drinking is not necessarily his first go-to. So uh, a beer probably does actually have him tipsy. That's not mm -hmm. a normal thing. And I'm yeah. Yeah. He's tall, but he's he's slim. Slim reaper. <laughs> You know, send the man what they call him. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Angela Bassett got uh, the Golden uh, Golden Globe for uh, Best Supporting Actress for uh, playing uh, Queen Ramonda in Black Panther. And she should get the Oscar. Like, she, her, her performance carried that movie. Hell yeah. That, the that rest of that movie was a fucked up love story that they cut half of the love out of so it just made it flow weird and it was just weird. Yo, yo but I got to I, her I got performance to was fucking amazing. Like, you would have thought she was in like one of them movies about like Nelson Mandela or something. Like, you would have thought she was like, oh, freedom! Like, I was I've lost both of my children and my family what more I want to do you know I believe right. her. I believe she really All lost right. I believe she really lost her son and her and her family like I really believe it was all over for her well you know Angela Bass has always been she she been that that top tier actress in general well, she'll make you really believe it got to do with it, boy. She had me in that joint with goosebumps. I was like, come on, Angie. <laughs> but hey, fuck out that movie. Tiz. I know, I know we don't agree with this guy majority of the time. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I, I think I might have to Don't you I bring up Bow Wow to me. Huh? Don't you bring up Bow Wow to me. Not Bow Wow, no. I think I might have to agree with this guy about Black, Black Panther this one time with his review, just because. No, mind you, I love the movie, but he had a point. And it's Dr. Umar Johnson. Have oh, God, Jesus. <laughs> Did y'all hear the review? Yeah, the, you fucked Panther. up already. How do you start a sentence off with, now I know we don't <laughs> agree, but nigga, I, you're right. Whatever you're about to say, you can oh, tell God. that. Oh, Give no. me somebody else that said the same thing, and then oh, who, who else agreed? And, and then let, let me hear. It. I, no, no, nigga, he said he he called Namor and them the unwater underwater man. Is the school open? Is the school open? It's not open, but that's school open. Laugh, yo! I ain't gonna laugh. I was at the, I was at the movie when it opened. <laughs> at the school open. I don't want his shit about nobody else's business till your business is all intact. Get fuck out of here. I don't want to see no more festivals or none of that. Cause them niggas had a goddamn promo run and opened a goddamn movie that that he said that, I didn't I want to see our black own. superheroes beaten up by the underwater Mexicans. <laughs> when he said that shit, I was so weak. I was laughing. I don't want to see our black leaders using bad English, bad grammar, <laughs> using terminology and uh, that nigga said, I know. and language of, uh, of of techniques and understandings of disabilities that are archaic and very outside <laughs> of very knowledge in this profession. I, I don't. I want to see, like, man, get the fuck out of here, man. I don't want to hear shit from you, Omar. <laughs> Man, that nigga called Namor underwater and, and get your credentials right. And then we talk. We can we can have a conversation at that uh, point. Oh, Give me my so motherfucking forty dollars back, bitch. I ain't forget. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Wuma, man. Fuck Wuma, man. <laughs> that nigga said underwater Mexican. And I ain't even cutting your wisdom, man. But like tell me, tell me somebody else said that shit, Pat, and then talk about it, man. Oh my me? god. That nigga said underwater Mexican. I was no more good. Anyway, 
Okay, and this from the up. same nigga that was talking about fucking want somebody to rub his feet down with fucking hot, hot avocados and weird shit. Let me get the fuck out of it, man. Oh, man. This man was putting on. Oh my god! All right. Well, um, from one movie to another movie, um, yes, Boosie man. Badass cast Flavor Flav to play his dad in this movie called in his movie called Where's MJ? After years of the internet calling him Flavor Flav. <laughs> He, yeah. he said, fuck it. <laughs> oh, my God. And the scene is hilarious. The scene is fucking hilarious. I, this makes so much sense. Yeah, I can see it. Is that his father? Mm, no, no. Well, the explanation of, like, if you my father, where you been? That's what Boosie asked. He was like, I've been on a tour. I was about to say, does Boosie know his father? I don't know. I, I I ain't saying they look just alike, but it, it, I That'd see be some fucked up shit to find out flavor flavor your dad. <laughs> Can that you imagine fun. the smell? I've heard the smell is horrible. Uh, now I don't know personally, but that's one of them ladies from one of them flavor of love shows said. Flavor but love. I believe it. He doesn't look well washed. Mm. There's a layer of he said well washed. You wore that few too like many times in this month without throwing it through the dry cleaner or the washer on his clothing. Mm. Like I can see it being a must in there. Yeah, boy. That's what the smell smell sound like. <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he smelled like fight the power. My D no, no, no. My D older Ren is a joke, man. Oh man, that nigga smell like fight the power. <laughs> <laughs> power whooping his ass. Oh man. Oh man. Didn't know what to think right. it. Oh fuck. Next on um, the good and fuckery news, um, a pigeon was caught in a prison yard with a tiny backpack of meth in Canada. Hmm. A pigeon. This is not as surprising because Did they, kill it, they used to have them homing pigeons that, that used to send messages true. for like kings and shit. No messages of pigeons, man. They went extinct. They're trying to bring them shit back. Yeah, so maybe they, you know, found a way to like kind of tap into that old DNA and you know train. So I, I'm not. This ain't absurd. The fact that they put it in a little backpack, like, why would you do that? Like, it's that's not little- like you couldn't find like some a, a tuft of feathers to put on it or like why? <laughs> like. The person who came up with this the smartest shit and dumb as hell at the same time. Like, well, oh, evidently, um, evidently it's a decade long tradition of avian drug smuggling in Canada. Uh, with backpacks? Mm-hmm. It's the backpack that throws it all off. Like, if you use like a tuft of feathers, you know, yeah, that's where the term backpack is coming from. Off of hay or something, it looked like he done ran through his nest and got caught, you know, whatever. But a backpack, like, what pigeon back, going to school back, by the pigeon? Backpack, backpack. This nigga got a 930 seminar. Backpack, nigga. Oh, hitchhiking pigeon. Get the fuck out of here, man. One wing up in the one wing up in the air. Nigga, you going my way? They said they had to corner it. You can imagine how <laughs> that looked. That would look trying to catch a pigeon. <laughs> he yeah. said he captured a bird after a lengthy period of time and seized the drugs and set it free. <laughs> so they, they, shoot the they, didn't, they didn't shoot the pigeon. Well, I understand why you wouldn't want to. Why? You don't like birds. Yeah, I I, I tell you that bitch. 
Wait till that bitch land and take the fuck out of there. Now, y'all heard that. What I heard was the only thing that make this story better is if the motherfucking pigeon had a guy quartered and just turned and just opened the backpack and ate the Beth Rock like <laughs> live copper. <laughs> just started spazzing on the niggas like fuck this you're gonna have to kill me <laughs> nigga went out like a like scarface <laughs> oh well look well, evidently there is a um there is a there's a long history of just got hired up and tried to peck the first officer that came in <laughs> maybe that's why they had that maybe that's why on animaniacs they had them pigeons that had like the godfather and stuff because like they got this article from um, February second in nineteen thirty that they found pigeons with capsule of drugs and and cocaine tied to their legs. Sir, have you seen pigeons? What what yeah. what animal you know more gangster in their lifestyle? I don't mean yeah. more tough or like more savage as far as like more ruthless. That's more like the killer type. I'm talking about more gangster as far as their everyday lifestyle than a pigeon. They eat whatever. Mm-hmm. They run in and they run in packs of gangs. Like what's popping? They can fly seven hundred miles a day, Bruh. And they they roll up on random other animals and just pick them the fuck up. Like man, get your ass over here. They say in twenty seventeen, a homing pigeon <laughs> carrying one hundred and seventy eight pills from Iraq to Kuwait, and yes, another backpack was trapped by. Uh, Kawadi officials near customs. Dang. The conflicting mm-hmm. news reports mm-hmm. from the Times said the pills were either ketamine or ecstasy. Mm. How much was each pill worth that you spent time? Maybe it was like a flock of pigeons and all of them had some on you. Like, hopefully, some of these make it. <laughs> I'm like, how much? <laughs> How much per pill is this worth that you like going through these extreme links? Like, nigga, just drive, bitch. For that, pigeon backpack, nigga, you can put that into a real backpack with some other shit and just drive. Well, the pigeon can't get caught. The pigeon ain't gonna snitch on you. You drive, they're gonna catch in their car. They're gonna search their car, catch that shit, and the whip with you. And it won't go for a plea deal. If they do all that searching, we don't and, know that it's the case. We just and, know that this motherfucker put a backpack with a hundred and some pills. I, I'm like, at t- even at ten pills a pop. What? what I mean, ten dollars a pop. What? What are we talking about here? Uh, yeah. Uh, you don't have to worry about the picture saying you know the YSL is a gang. You know. Just seems real risky. For you to just lose it all, then at least have a better shot. Like nigga, another animal, a fucking hawk or some some pellegrine falcon, just come out of maybe. nowhere. Yeah, that, okay. you get yourself a drone, shit, motherfucking bird. Maybe nigga running through a propeller and your shit is gone. Maybe maybe they got raided and then they said instead of just flushing everything we want to just go ahead and just set up a system of pigeons so when we get raided we're going to just send them off and they'll just go to where we tell them to go or oh, I'm being too now, creative now that is intelligent you have a, you have all of your sh- your shit in your stash house tied to pigeons where you just go pluck your shit from there when you need it and then if you get raided you release all the pigeons and they go meet up at the next stash and that is fucking genius <laughs> Unless you got a lot of pigeons and the fucking feds realize this flock of pigeons going somewhere. Where they going? Where they all flying? Isn't that great? Let's see where that's headed. And they follow it. They smart enough to follow it. But the odds of that might not be that that happened. Yeah. But that is some that is some smart shit. I ain't gonna even run. I ain't gonna, gonna knock that. That's kind of the news report be called the bird man. Well, I will say this, um, just to segue into the next subject. Um, you don't have to worry about those pigeons saying that YSL is a gang. Mm-hmm. Speak, which, <laughs> the, the judge in the Young Thug case um, ordered a juror to write a 30-page essay after she skipped jury duty for a vacation on why jury duty is important. 
Okay. okay. Hold on. The segue doesn't tie. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm conf- huh? Can you, you know break that for I me, mean, please? I'm I'm having a well, I was saying, if anything happens to the pigeon, you don't have to worry about them snitching or saying that where they're from is a gang or any type well, of affiliation. We were going on vacation for the juror. Well, the juror was a part of the Young Thug case. <laughs> was the juror part of the gang or something? No. No. But you part of the <laughs> Somebody out there in the uh, comments, you gonna understand. Mm-hmm. I got it, Pat. <laughs> you always do, face. Oh man, but that's all Ooh. I have to say about that. And um, GA <laughs> report: Kanye got married to oh, one of his Yeezy designers. Hey. Didn't he just get divorced? Yeah. How long has it been since he been since he divorced Kim K? Has that been a year? That's that's a good question. Let's go to the article. Let's see. Like, I, I don't feel like it's been been a reason that he got divorced like within the past eight months or so. You know what? It might have been a year. It might have been a year by now. Damn. All right. Well, hold on. Won't he just dating somebody else? Ten months. It's been ten months. Yeah. But won't he date somebody else recently? I mean, you know, celebrities, you know how they do. Now this nigga married again. He ain't learned nothing from the last time he got married quick. Mm-hmm. All right. One thing I can say, I am blessed that when I wanted to get married before I was actually married, I'm glad that my wife was like, no, let's just be patient. Because I would have definitely been giving up half like probably a year in when I wanted to get married. Yeah. So, Kanye, uh, I I hope that your relationship, I hope that this person actually allows you to find stability. I hope they like guide you to some peace and like guide you to the help you need and shit like that. Well, you Instead, know, being, the one being that they like work with each other, that seems like a more normal way of meeting your mate. So it's kind of like the dash type thing where he started dating a photographer lady. True. Yeah. With her name Rocky or something like that, and he be dating her. I mean, he's meeting somebody where he works at. A lot of people meet yeah. their significant other with they were working. Makes sense. So, yay! While you're getting married, get, go go see your therapist, your psychiatrist, your psychologist, whatever it is that you have that is your person, your contact for those medical needs and stuff like. Oops! Oops! Side your head. I said, "Oops!" Upside your head. I can't get. Everybody say, "Oh, Bilal!" Oh, Bilal! Oh, <laughs> oops, up, side head, say, oops, up, side head, say, everybody, say, oh, you know, Glorilla's real name is Gloria, hallelujah. What? Glorilla, her real name is Gloria, hallelujah. Ah, uh, no, I gotta see this. I gotta look this up. I gotta see. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say her real name is George. No, uh, that's gotta be one of those fake, fake <laughs> real names. They be giving somebody. They be that, giving that is a that oh that is a very um her name is Gloria, but it's not Hallelujah. It's, 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 it's celebrity name, real name. <laughs> Wait a minute. I get this other ones too. Yeah, I know they had one for fifty cents. You, know yeah. right. you, you remember the type of rumors that used to go around about Sierra back in the day? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was just thinking about Gorilla, and I don't know that it's a rumor. 
I'm gonna leave it at that and I'm gonna move on. Her voice is just, I'm gonna just put a pen walk off. No, I ain't talking about her voice. Give a damn about that shit. Um <laughs> just look. Just look, nigga. Look. It was just look. Don't say just look. Watch when you look. Pull up. Looking at it right now, Pat. Pat, you looking at it? I ain't trying to. No, just look at it. I want you to see. Face, pull it up. Look at it. Tell me what you see. I'm tripping. You don't see that Johnny Bravo chiseled ass chin. <laughs> you don't see that shit. All right. Yeah, she do got like a strong chin. Like, uh, uh. You don't see it. Yeah, she I'm, can cut bricks with that chin, though. I'm yeah. bugging. I'm saying, yeah, look, I'm, look at look. It is very. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, she do I, got a strong face. It is. It is extremely strong. It is a uh, gorilla glue strong. It is a. Uh, it looked like, and she barely, I, I, I like you day. barely ever see her. Are her eyes ever open? It don't ever look like her eyes are open. Now I don't know what they into. I don't know what they eyes be doing. I don't make eye contact with people. Hey, look, man, brusses can look at whatever she want to or he want to. Alleged, alleged. I ain't alleged nothing. I'm just saying what things look like. I ain't saying nothing is at all. I ain't even saying that it, that rumor is a, a rumor. I'm just saying that if it was to be, I wouldn't be like, oh, not that. I'd be like, oh, all right, yeah, that, that's. That lines up. <laughs> that checks out. Jesus. <laughs> bitch, bitch, come on the track like, like, who, who, who are they like? Who are they like? Who? I'm sorry. You don't know what they got to do. Girl voice is some fuckery. This has been the second week of a lot of digressions. See, Face got to miss it the last time. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't stay on top of it. <laughs> Strong faces dancing my head, making me think of jokes and random. What the fuck? But that's pretty yeah. much the fuckery I had for this week. Got that big ass giggity giggity job. <laughs> what you just said, Patrick? I said that's all the fuckery I had for this week. <laughs> oh man. Giggity. <laughs> Her job big. Ooh, she got that David Hasselhoff. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> that old that nigga Kurt Russell. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Christopher Reeves ass. <laughs> Henry Ken <laughs> Bell. Oh, Humphrey Bogart face ass. <laughs> Bitch is like a strong lean man. Oh man. <laughs> she do her makeup with a chisel. She broke off Mount Rushmore. <laughs> oh, my God. 
a fuck nigga free, y'all. Four niggas was holding me back. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> they thought she had low self-esteem because her mama used to always had to say, keep your chin up now. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's why our voice so deep, man. I got that strong <laughs> Somebody drinking somebody uh boiling tea. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you just say? No bad. Oh no, no. What'd you say? As long as you got a deep ass voice. <laughs> as if her chin made her carrying her chin made her vocal cords so much. Look, that was cat basic. <laughs> Barry uh, Bond, baby. <laughs> got a whole auditorium in her jaw. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we have an after school specials in the jaw. <laughs> hey, look, man, you don't need to be doing this. You can have a big recital. Her face on the juice. <laughs> <coughs> Mark is why her face is. Oh, waffle iron face. This is you call it. You call it a waffle iron. Oh, shit. I done knocked my water over. God damn it. See? What'd you get? Oh, my God. Yo, I cry so bad. Yo, that is hilarious. All I can say is, man, when somebody pick a name and it's so appropriate because the universe just knew. Boy. Oh, my God. She got the juggernaut helmet for a job. Low Rilla. <laughs> Woo, her face looked like the uh, helmet in Spaceballs. <laughs> Oh man, what a quartz. The Schwartz. May the Schwartz be with you, Nick. Oh my God. Oh. <laughs> the, golden, the, the, the floating golden head on that one episode of Rick and Morty. Oh, oh. yeah, and that, one, that old creator Rick and Morty got felony charges for domestic violence. That shit's crazy. Ooh. But, uh, but back to Glorilla. <laughs> Uh, oh my god. Oh, her face looks like Korg from Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, mate. <laughs> we still here, hey? <laughs> Shit, oh, boy. God. Damn. It's her versus right. Seth Rogen to be the thing on Fantastic Four movie. Boy. <laughs> All the mutants looking at her. It's a sentinel. Her chin looked like an overgrown cow hoof. Have y'all seen them videos on YouTube, by the way? Where they be trimming cow hoofs? No, yeah. I Listen. I didn't know that was a thing. Listen. If you ever get bored, and you just like, all right, I'd like to see some different shit. Just type in cow hoof trimming. It is one of the weirdest. Now, I will say this. If you're squeamish, don't. Mm. They'd be like having like abscesses and pus uh. cavities and shit. But when I tell you it is the I, for the past month, so the month before that, I was stuck on Judge Mathis reruns for some reason. <laughs> Don't know why. This month has been all cow hoof trimming. Tried to watch the horses, but that shit boring. Horse shoes on. But the cow hoofs, man, when I tell you, they be cutting with the weirdest shit. 
Boy, they be finding nails and big cavities and these bacteria filled hoof linings. Oh, man. It's very entertaining. Good shit to go to sleep to, too. Because all of the dudes that do it, all of their voices is like the, the no, most boring audio book ever. You know, you gotta. You gotta be careful there when you're trimming the cow hoof. You know, it's like the gonna, voice, uh. so you don't give it dermatitis. Oh, we're gonna put a block on it there. And let her down out of the crush. You said something about Jonah Lucas. <laughs> I said dermatitis. No, <laughs> <Another> man. <laughs> 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 Nigga, why would I be talking about Jonah Lucas in the middle of cow hoof trimming? Does, it, does he do that? Is that his hobby or something? Did I not know this? Oh, shit. All right. <laughs> we here. digress. I want to know. That's, that's a video. That, hey, pull that up. Where's that? Let's do a live on that. I'd watch. Oh I love cow hoof trimming. Tell you something else. Oh no, I think we already talked about that before. The, 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 when they be shaving the wood, the wood resin. No, you never seen. No, when they take these big knots, like these big roots and like big chunks of wood that's all gnarled up, and they put it on a spinner, and they basically shave this wood down into these crazy sculptures, and they pour this resin stuff in it that give it different colors. They be making dragon eggs and. Oh, yeah, I've seen shit. Like oh, that's, shit. that's another thing. And then my last thing, this is just random YouTube. I don't know why I'm shouting this shit out. This ain't got nothing to do with none of y'all. I'm just talking to y'all now. Um, the, the little men, the little the, the little native men, I don't know where they from. I don't know where they from Peru or... Are they, oh, they be making the pools out of mud? Oh, man, they be making these goddamn mansions and shit. Yeah, out of bamboo and dirt. Niggas be having swimming pools and, and two story houses and uh -huh. I don't know where they be getting the food from, but them niggas be eating good at night. <laughs> like, oh, we did all this shit with some bamboo and some and some rocks, some some shit to some rocks to dig with. God damn, y'all good. <laughs> I, good. I tell you what, it, it make it make people look real stupid when they say that them ancient folk couldn't have done. Like some of them sculptures and shit. Like maybe they could. Maybe they just had that type of shit. Oh, I could take a string and do this, and it give me an exact measurement for a circle. So then when I do cut, is it's smooth. Oh, if I keep using this and I keep on doing this over and over again, it's gonna sand it down to smooth enough. Like I, I don't know. I think we don't get them enough credit, man. Because if them niggas could do all that with a rock and some shit, no. All I gotta say. Rougher, tougher time back then, and they survived it. You're right about they that. They might not have the longest, longest living, you know, longest lifespan at that time. You know, they probably died like maybe. Oh no, you know, back then a cup of water could take you out. Mm -hmm. You drink water with the wrong mosquito bacteria and that shit. Next thing you know, you fucking laid up with malaria for seven weeks and then died from typhoid fever or some weird shit. Yeah, they, they really did need That's cold. Die. That shit was cold. You break a leg, you could die. That's it. They they take your whole you break you break a leg, they just take the whole leg. Gotta practice. So you shucking corn. With the ladies, something about that just doesn't sound non-derogatory. Like it, it oh. chucking corn just uh, sounds very derogatory for some. Reason. Oh, that's the part that that sounded out of that whole <laughs> word vomit that I just had. That that was the that was the bad part. That was where the line was drawn at, at the shucking of corn. <laughs> the actual correct terminology for the act of <laughs> taking the husk off the corn. For some reason. <laughs> not the, not the, not the 
not the digit they just take your leg and now you're a gimp sitting around with the ladies shucking corn. No, the shucking corn part is the bad part. <laughs> Dad, I love you, brother. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, I'm good. I'm <laughs> Last digression. We apologize. Come on, squad. Thank y'all for sticking with us for all these years. Because uh, I will say this. I've had another fun night, though. This this mm-hmm. felt like a normal conversation where we just be talking shit. Damn right. Oh, oh yeah. This is that nigga Yaman? Irie! Bumba Clyde! Yeah, that too. ring a ling Okay. Oh my god. All right. Um, Pond Squad. I don't got nothing else to say. Uh, fellas, y'all got anything else to say? I think we about ran this one into the ground. Thank y'all for coming. Keep on coming back. Indeed, man. Hey, y'all, if y'all want to support, give us money. You can see it at the bottom of your screen. Do the buy me a coffee. Do the cash app. Dollar sign. Partner tears one. Buymeacoffee.com backslash partner. Donate either place. Give us money. If you want to give us money and get shit back for it, face how they do that. Go to the store. Hardtradeclothing.com. Yes. It's rtradeclothing.com. Please forgive the technical issue that you may have going to the site. Continue. Press forward and go to the damn site. I'm still in communications with the third party in this site. It's been a little difficult getting them to get their shit straight, but I'm pressing forward and still putting merchandise out there for my fans and my fans. So if you want Pod Squad merchandise, go to rtradeclothing.com. If you want AC83 merchandise, go to Artreclothing.com. A R T R E clothing.com. And now nah, over here, we won't spell clothing for you. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> go to the damn store. <laughs> First of all, to end the show, I got to come back on camera all cool like Face did when it was his turn to talk about birth. That nigga just popped up. Like, hey, you know. Oh my God. Artre Clothing. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> that nigga said go to the damn store. It's been a partner. Yeah. And I've been pissed. And I've been along with it. It's the Padawan here. <laughs> Fuck it. I've been along with <laughs> Once again, it's space and the place. Collectively, we successfully finished this race. Once again, thank y'all for coming. Could have been anywhere else, but you continue to join us in these conversations that you can join in on. Please continue to join in. Join in, six, y'all. Just join. At T H E P O D N A S. Oh, anyway, you know, watch the TV. You ain't doing that with your life. So go ahead, watch or listen to the podcast, bitch. Now do that shit. Love you, motherfuckers. Thanks for putting up with our nonsense and chicaneries. Peace, motherfuckers! Have a great week. Motherfuckers.